Okay guys, so here's the first one. Um, this guy was online the other day and he said, has anyone kept Bashir species with reed fish, which is another name for rope fish, uh, in the same tank? If so, what's your experience? I would imagine it would be fine since they're both African fish from similar environments with similar needs, but I've never kept either before and I love them both. So he had a pretty long message on there and if you go through the comments on it, uh, John Sharp actually tagged me in this. He said, Oh, Haley, oh, queen of rope, uh, oh, ropefish queen and breeder of Bashirs, where art thou? So, of course, I had to respond. Uh, the Bashir will outcompete the ropefish for food, but if he feeds them right, it shouldn't be any problems. Um, he was asking some questions about that. I just kind of confirmed with him Bashirs are crazy eaters. If it fits in their mouth, they're going to eat it. But if you feed them enough in the right way, like feed one in one spot, one in the other, uh, they should do okay. Um, so helped him out. This next one was a bit more serious. Um, this one said, my rope fish has a mark on him. It seems very sluggish. Just treated the tank with erythromycin and told me the pH. That spot that you saw was exactly the uh, white spot of death. Um, I said, this is a common problem with rope fish and a hard one to fix. I've seen this specific make, uh, marking on a total of eight different rope fish I've owned over the years, most recently in a group of five that I had shipped to me from Florida. It's a very aggressive um, problem and it'll spread and grow larger. I was successful in treating the last batch with erythromycin and general cure and large daily volume water changes. Uh, but I still lost two out of the five. So I asked some questions about whether it was a new tank, things like that. Um, they said it did spread really quickly. And I was like, was this the newest one? And they said, I think so. But I have one that looked exactly like that. But I've only had them for maybe six months and the newest one maybe four months. So I said it for sure spreads to the others in the cases I've seen. And when I get new ropes, I immediately treat them. So hopefully that helped that person out. Now this one was a little more serious. This guy said he just got this rope fish from Pet Value and it looked very bad. Um, if anyone can identify the problem or tell me how to fix it. Um, so I took a look at the pictures and it looked to me like ammonia burn. So um, open up the rest of these comments here. Um, I told him it was good, for, good on him for trying. He actually got it for free because it was they wanted him to help it. Uh, guy's into turtles really hard so he was treating it a little bit like a turtle, but that's okay. Um, when I started talking to him, Jordan actually is the one that tagged me in this one. Um, and Billy Futch told him to check me out, um, which I think is awesome. Thank you guys. I love getting tagged in these. So I asked for the status on the fish. Um, I needed a little bit more info. Um, it's a female. It looked like he was either drugged in shipping or um, had an ammonia burn, something like that. Um, John Alex Taylor said to listen to me because apparently I'm an expert. I'm not really an expert. I just really, really love this fish and I've done a ton of research. So thank you for the vote of confidence, sir. Um, then the guy sent me a video of how it was doing. He had it in a 10 gallon that he'd only filled with a couple of inches of water and still looks really, really not great to me. Um, I told him to fill that 10 gallon about halfway up and give him somewhere to hide. Um, Alex came back and said her throat looked swollen. She was having trouble breathing. She was upside down in the pet store, but has been right side up since he brought her home. Um, I agree. It looked like stress and ammonia. So I told him he was doing good. I told him to give him some catapa leaves, something floating to hang out in. Um, kind of give him some general information on what's going on with rope fish and how I treat them and that kind of thing. And maybe what I thought it might have been, like some untreated tap water or some type of shipping drug. Um, I told him catapa leaves, catapa leaves, those will help with the ammonia burn, and the UV light really isn't necessary. In fact, in the dark would be much better. Um, and then some other people chimed in on some stuff. And then she, she's wrote on there to listen to me, which is great and awesome and I really love. So thank you guys. Uh, hopefully that helped that person out.
So that's kind of what I like to do in my time off, is help people out online. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I just thought I'd kind of show you some of the things that I do when I don't have my hands deep in a fish tank. So thanks for checking it out. Live your best life and stay classy, San Diego.